Hello everyone, welcome to our Math 146 virtual class. Uh, today we are going to be uh, looking at any questions you might have over Unit 4, uh, which is our Chapter 12 statistics topics. Uh, or also the statistics project. We will look at that some and talk about how to uh, use Excel for that. So let's see. Um, I sent a worksheet uh, that shows just uh, the unit four review. And so I thought we could look over that first because that goes over uh, some of the things that uh, we've most recently been talking about at least. Uh, so that one, let me share that one up here on the screen. That will be, I've got several things to share today. Let's see. This one, yes. OK, uh, so uh, the first thing that we kind of talked about in this unit is the difference in statistics and parameters, right? And so a statistic comes from a sample, uh, whereas a parameter is coming from the population. And so remember that uh, the population is like the, the big um, area, right? So our population. Oh, just a second. <laughs> I think I have my tablet backwards here. OK, that will work. So we have our population, you know, is like the big group and then we're going to take a smaller group, which is our sample, right? So here's our population and our sample. And then any information we get from the sample, like if we got um, a statistic that was like 15%, okay, uh, this we would call a statistic, right? But if we were uh, collecting data like for a census uh, or we were able to uh, collect information from the entire population and we found something that was 15%, uh, then that would be called a parameter because it came from the population. Okay, uh, so even though they're both 15%, um, one of them is a statistic and one is a parameter, and it all depends on where they came from. Okay, uh, so let's look at some of these examples here. Let me erase this off. Maybe. So what this gives us um, in these examples is just um, it gives us a scenario and then we're supposed to decide is it a statistic or a parameter. So this one says uh, young adults aged 18 to 21 um, at 5.4 percent are among the least likely to be depressed. The depression rate generally rises as Americans age. Uh, blah, blah, blah. All right, so we've got all these percentages. It says these findings are from surveys with more than 100,000 Americans conducted as part of the Gallup Wellbeing Index um, in 2013. So this is from Gallup.com. All right, and so we're looking at uh, these numbers here. So all these you know percentages are what we're asking about so all these percentages here are these going to be uh, statistics or parameters so we would say that these are all statistics and that's because it says it came from surveys with more than a hundred thousand americans now that's a lot of people right but that's not all Americans. There's more than 100,000 Americans. So we would say uh, this is statistics. All right, the next one we see uh, says, according to the 2010 census, 23.4% of Kentuckians are under 18 years old. Okay, well, a census, anytime we look at that, uh, we're talking about about as close as we can get to the entire population as possible. So that means that this value here is going to be a parameter because it is um, describing the whole population. Uh, looking over all of my classes, uh, there was a success rate of 85%. 
OK, well, because we're looking at all of my classes, we're talking about every student that I had that semester. This would also be considered a parameter because it includes the entire population. The last one in the study, uh, so you know when it mentions a study or a poll, then that probably means that we have taken a sample of some sort. Um, so it says 37% of the subjects saw an increase in energy. So this would be a statistic because it is representing um, that sample from the study. Okay, so remember a sample and statistic, they both start with S, right? So they go together, parameter, population go together, they both start with P. That makes it kind of easy to remember. Identify the following as quantitative or qualitative. Uh, so we've got um, our quantitative here. Quantitative is thinking of a quantity. Uh, so it is when we have numbers for the most part. Qualitative is uh, looking at a quality you possess. Uh, so this is usually uh, words, right? Uh, so we would say that um, the quantitative uh, ones would be age. That's going to be a quantity. Uh, height would be a quantity. And gas mileage would be a quantity. Right, so that will be quantitative. And then qualitative, hair color uh, and gender would be qualitative. Okay, um, so qualitative is a quality you possess or a category you fall into. Quantitative is uh, some quantity, so it's something we measured or that we counted. All right, we also learned about different types of graphs and charts that we can use. Uh, one of those was a stem and leaf plot, and a stem and leaf plot is kind of a quick way to create a histogram. And so we're going to be using these for quantitative variables, right? Because a histogram is used for quantitative variables. And so this one gave us uh, the number of calories in a hot dog for 17 different brands, uh, and we're going to construct a stem and leaf plot to display the data. Now the first thing that we could do that might make this a little easier uh, is we might want to rewrite the data from smallest to largest. Uh, you don't have to do that, um, but uh, that might make it a little easier to kind of see where we're going to start and end. So it looks like that 107 is the smallest and then we have uh, 135 and 136. And 139. Then we have 140. Let's see what else do we have? Uh, 146, 147. I missed a 138, and uh, I'll put that in here. Um, 47. Then we go up to. No, we got a 153 here. We got 172, 173, 175, 179. We're almost done here. 182, 190, 191, and 195. Okay, I think we got all of them there. So with our stem and leaf plot, what we're trying to do is we're thinking of every number as the last number in or the last digit in the number is the leaf and the rest of that number is the stem. So like for the number 107, uh, 10 would be the stem and 7 would be the leaf. So based on uh, the numbers we have here, we go from 100 and seven all the way to 195. So that means the stems we're going to need will start at 10. Right and go all the way to 19. So we include all the different stems in between, even if we don't have any values that happen to fall there. So even though we don't have any 110s or 120s, 
we still include them because we're thinking of this as like a number line. So going back to our first number here, we have 107, that's our first leaf here. Then we don't have any 110s, 120s, but we do have 130s. We have a 135, 36, uh, 38, and 39. Then we have a 140, 46, 47, 153, no 160s. 172, 3, 5, 9, 182, and then 190, 91, 95. All right, and so what we said we could do with this um, is we could kind of make like a histogram, right? So we could uh, make bars that kind of go over these numbers, and that would kind of look like uh, what our histogram would look like. And so we typically use the stem and leaf plot just for smaller data sets uh, because, you know, we're not going to want to be writing out lots and lots of different digits, you know, if we have a really large data set. But for a smaller data set like this, it's a good one. Um, you know, what this one kind of shows is, is how there's kind of like two peaks here. We've got like uh, one group of hot dogs that seems to have calories around 130 to 150, and then another group that's around the 170s to 190s. So that might be something to look at. You know, what is there something interesting or something that characterizes what these hot dogs are versus this one like is it a certain brand or a certain type of hot dog um, and then this is another one we would find interesting because it's a lot lower than the rest of them right and so we noticed the second question says um, if we noticed or if we found out that one of the brands uh, was Eat Slim Veal Hot Dogs. Which one do you think might have represented them? Um, so we would say probably this one, right? Because uh, we would expect that it's probably going to have a lot less calories than the others. Um, so that would kind of tell us why we had that one point that was a lot lower than the other ones. Okay, so moving on to the next topic, we looked at uh, summarizing our data numerically with means and medians, and we talked about when it was best to use a mean or a median, and one of the reasons why we might use a mean or a median is because of how the distribution is shaped. So if we've got um, a symmetric distribution, uh, then what it will look like is uh, if we did the histogram, it would look something like this, okay? So where it's uh, the same on the left and the right, they're all, and this one's all kind of centered in the middle. And if we drew a curve on top of that, we would kind of see this, this curve shape like that, okay? Now for this first one, it says the weight of healthy newborns in the medical center in 2018. All right, so if we were gonna graph that, if we're talking about healthy newborns, we would maybe say, uh, let's say most of the newborns are somewhere here at about seven and a half pounds, okay? And then you might have some, you know, down here from five, six, seven pounds, and some up here, um, you know, seven, eight, nine pounds, whatever. Uh, but you're not gonna have many over here. You're also not gonna have many over here, and most of them are gonna fall somewhere in the middle. So we would probably say this is going to be a pretty symmetric uh, distribution. If we had said the weight of all newborns at the medical center, uh, well, then it is possible, you know, then we're including uh, preemies and those that are in the NICU and all that stuff. So then it might be possible that we would have, you know, some values over here that might skew the data. But as it is, I would say it's probably a pretty symmetric distribution. Now, what about this next one? The test scores from the English final that had two zeros from students who did not show up on the test day. Okay, so if we were drawing this on a number line, okay, um, so we'd have these two students here that got a zero, and then we're gonna assume probably everybody else, let's say maybe starting around here, let's say we're somewhere around here, uh, 50, 60, okay, somewhere here, then maybe we start getting some other people, hopefully most people, 
uh, we're making over here somewhere, right? Um, sorry, my bars aren't the same, but you get the general idea. So what would happen with this is most of the data would be over here, and then you would have this long tail over here to account for the fact that you had those two zeros. So this one would be skewed um, because of those uh, low values and because they're to the left here, right? The low values are to the left. We would say this is skewed to the left. Uh, this is like when we did in class talking about salaries or income that's typically going to be skewed uh, to the right. It's going to have that long tail. And the reason why, like in this case, most of the employees would, you know, be making somewhere around here. And then probably the vice president, president, whatever, are going to be up here, right? And so that um, is up here to the right. And so that would be uh, skewed to the right. A study recorded the time it took for a sample of seven students to take a test. The following table is going to show us how long it took uh, to take the test. So um, this one, I'm going to go ahead and show you how we, uh, you know, would do it by hand. Um, but I'm also going to do after that how to do it um, in the calculator um, or on Excel. All right, so this data is not ordered. so. In most data sets, it is going to be easier if you write the data from smallest to largest. Uh, so this one we have 38, 39, uh, 41, 42, 44, 46, and 48. Okay, um, so the range we're going to take uh, the largest number, which is 48, and subtract the smallest number, which is 38. And so that gives us a range of 10. So that tells us a very quick overview of what uh, the, the uh, distribution of the data looks like, the spread of the data. Um, so it's spread out by 10 numbers. All right, X bar, that's our mean. OK, and so the mean is the average, right? So to do that, uh, we're going to add up all the values. Let me add those up. OK, so when I add them, I get 298. And then I'm going to divide by 7 because that is how many numbers I have. And I get 42.57, okay, is my average. The standard deviation we're usually not going to do by hand, so this one I'm going to save for a second. We'll do that in Excel. Uh, the median, uh, the median is the middle number, right? So what I want to do is looking at this data set, there's seven data points. Uh, so this number right here is in the middle, right? Because that leaves three in the and three in the top. So our median would be uh, 42. So with the median, uh, we can uh, compare that to the mean here. It says looking at the mean and the median, what would you say about the shape of the distribution? So because our um, Let's see, mean and median are similar, right? Because we've got 42 and 42 and a half. That's fairly similar. We also noted, notice in the actual data set up here, uh, there's not a really extreme high or low number, right? They all kind of go together. So we would say this is probably going to be a fairly symmetric distribution. Um, because we don't notice any high or low values um, and because the mean and the median are similar. All right, now I'm going to open up Excel here and let's look at um, how we could put data in and how we can calculate. 
Um, so I'm going to type in that data set we just had. So with Excel, if you haven't used it before, or haven't used it much, um, we always put our numbers down the column. So each column is like a data set. Um, you know, sometimes when we're working on it as a homework problem, if we're writing it out ourselves, we might write it out like as a row, uh, but that's not typically how Excel likes to see it. It likes it um, as uh, the column. So in Excel, mainly you can uh, create whatever you want, whatever type of formula you want. Like if you wanted to say, um, First, you would start with equals. That means that you're going to put in some sort of equation. But if I wanted to say this number plus two, um, then I could do that. OK, um, uh, you can do pretty much any math uh, equation that you would want. You know, if you want to multiply, add, divide, whatever. Um, but it can also do things like calculating the average or the median. And mainly what you need to know with that is you just need to know what um, what to type in. Now, of course, we have access to the Internet now, um, so you could always Google these things like if you, you know, are not sure how to find an average or find the mean in Excel. If you Google that, you will find tons of different um, videos on how to do that. But to find the mean in Excel, you actually type in average. Um, so remember, you start off with an equal sign and you write average. And as soon as you start typing now, there's this predictive text down here that um, kind of shows you what you're probably wanting to know. And so you could click on that and it could tell you how to use it. Um, but we're going to do the average and then we open a parenthesis and then we're going to go up here and highlight all the numbers that we want to include in our average. OK, and then close your parenthesis and push enter. And so the way we highlight here is we, uh, you know, go up and click on that number we want to start with and then hold uh, the left mouse button down and then just scroll down until, you know, and then let up when you're done. OK, so that would be our mean. Uh, we can also find the median. Uh, that one you do actually just type in median, so equals median. And again, highlight our data here. And there's our median. OK, so if we want to find the standard deviation, we do equals S T. D E V uh, is what we use for standard deviation, uh, so just abbreviated so you don't have to type out the whole thing and we highlight our data here, right? And there is our standard deviation. So this was our mean, our median and the standard deviation. Alright, so you can kind of see here um, when I highlight the number you can see up here uh, what what was actually typed in. OK, um, so we typed in the average here, the median for that one, and then the standard deviation. Alright, um, so that's how we could do that uh, in Excel, and that's pretty quick and easy to do. Uh, if you have a graphing calculator, uh, I have some videos on our uh, YouTube page that shows how you could use the graphing calculator as well, but I know several of you don't have it, um, so you don't have to worry about that. You can always just use Excel. Uh, for the mean and median, you know, those are ones you could do the formula for. You're probably not going to have a whole lot of questions about the standard deviation, but if you do have to calculate that, I would say um, using Excel is probably the easiest way to do that. So 3.64 was our standard deviation here. All right, and then we talked about in uh, when we are learning about graphs and charts, we talked about frequency tables and relative frequency tables. And so this one we're doing here with qualitative data, right? We're grouping them by um, a quality or a category that they fall into. And so remember the frequency is just the count, right? And then the relative frequency is the percentage um, of the whole or the proportion. Um, so instead of just looking at the count, we're going to look at what is the count relative to the rest of the distribution. So we end up looking at the total and then dividing the count by the total. 
So let's go through here and we're just going to count how many are in each of these. So let's start with um, education here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we have 10 there. I'll change my colors for these. Maybe that'll make it easier for me to see it. Um, next we'll do business. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. All right, next is nursing. One, two, Three, four, five, six. Okay, six, I think, for that. Um, music. Two. Two, music, and then the rest would be social work. Let's just make sure we all of those and didn't miss anybody. We got one. Two, three, four, five. All right, um, so those are our frequencies. Then we can add up and we get thirty, um, which is uh, what we should have gotten. That was the total here, so thirty. Uh, is what we would get. All right. Then when we're going to do the relative frequency, we're going to take our count and divide by the total sample size. All right. And then we will write it either as a decimal, like 0.33, or we could write it as a percentage. So we should be used to going back and forth from decimals to percentages because we did that a lot. Um, in our second unit when we were doing interest rates and all that. So uh, just kind of look at your homework if they want it as the decimal proportion or if they want it as a percentage, just to make sure uh, that you're putting it in the way, um, you know, the question is asking. Uh, so check on that before you hit final uh, submit, uh, you know, to make sure that you're not just submitting it um, as a, you know, not what they wanted basically. Okay, um, so this is how we would do a frequency chart, a relative frequency chart, and then what we could do with those numbers is, uh, you know, we could put them in a bar graph or a histogram depending on uh, what type of data we have. This one would be 0.07, or this one is just like 7%, and the last one, 5 out of 30, okay, 0.16. Seven. So that's about 17%, right? If we rounded that one there. Um, all right, so then what we could do um, is our relative frequency should add up to one um, or 100% if everybody was included in just one of the categories. Um, so let's see, six. Yeah, that should add up to 100%. If it doesn't add up exactly to 100, like if it added up to 99.8%, it probably just has to do with rounding, you know, like how we rounded, how many decimal places we used, that kind of stuff. So um, as long as it's close to 100, it probably is uh, correct, okay? All right, so those are just a few examples of things we have covered. Um, in this chapter. Uh, of course, we also did uh, some stuff at the beginning about like reading through articles and identifying uh, lurking variables and um, those kind of things. So don't forget about all that. Uh, we looked at the right type of graph to use, you know, when to use which graph um, and how to interpret a graph, making sure that, you know, the axis looks correct and uh, that it's not skewed by using a pictogram, et cetera. OK, so those are some of the other things we talked about, too. Uh, but let's look at make sure I don't have any uh, questions here. All 
right, so uh, let's go to our stats project. Stats project. Um, this one. Okay, so in the stats project, uh, mainly what you're doing here is analyzing some data sets, and you're going to be doing these in Excel. So you should have been given the Excel file so you don't have to worry about typing in the data by yourself. And then creating a histogram and a line graph. Okay, so I've got some examples um, here to show you. So let me show you, we can look at, now this is the data you're gonna have, right? Um, and so it has, uh, this is Mr. Smith's grades, okay? Uh, so on this one, we were wanting to find the mean and the median and the standard deviation, right? So if you wanna do that here, uh, just like we did before, uh, you would type in, um, average and you can type this anywhere on here uh, because all it's it, it doesn't matter which cell you choose to type it in. Um, you just have to make sure you highlight the right data. OK, so we're going to highlight all this data. And that is our average and then we could do the median. And we'll highlight all this. OK, and we get that and then we can also do our standard deviation. Sorry, it only has one D in there. Uh, so standard deviation and we highlight all this again. And we get this, right? So here's our, our mean, our median, and our standard deviation. Okay, um, and so remember our standard deviation is telling us how different all the data points are. So of course, the larger your standard deviation is, uh, the more variable your data is. So that's telling you that you had um, test scores that were um, more different when you have a larger standard deviation. So that might give you an idea that maybe there were more people that scored lower or higher, or uh, if it's a small standard deviation, that all the test scores were fairly similar um, and centered around the mean. So that's kind of what you would be thinking about with the standard deviation. Um, but that's how we could uh, do that, okay? Then we also want to uh, create a histogram. So let me just show you here, like with Mr. Smith's, what we're going to do whenever we're going to insert a graph, you want to go ahead and highlight your data here. OK, so we're just highlighting it. And then we're going to go up here to insert. And this is where all our graphs are, so you can kind of see which one you want because um, it has a little picture of it. Like we've got our pie chart and bar graphs, line graphs, all that. But this one right in the middle, that is your histogram. Um, it actually says that right there and you click on it. Uh, so you click on it and then as soon as you highlight it, it's going to show you what it's going to look like. So that is the one we want to do, OK? And then uh, what I told you all to do is let's uh, keep the categories the same for all the different teachers and that makes it easier to compare. And so what we're going to do is down here, we're going to left click on this, which highlights the data. And then we're going to right click and say we want to format the axis. OK, so when we do that, what it opens up is this axis options and the bins is what Excel calls calls the categories like the groups that they're putting the numbers into. Do is we could actually change how many bins we have or we could change the width of the bins. And so that's what I want you all to do. I want you to change the bin width to 10. OK, and so what that does. Um, is that will give you. Um, actually, just a second, how do I want those? Um, let's see, just a second. Oh, 
what I want to do. It's okay if we have it like that. Okay, I think that's what it took. Let's see. Let me go back here so I make sure I'm doing it the way that the I put the instructions. Um, okay, yeah, it says group group by tens. So what we have now is we kind of can see um, where the different grades were. So it looks like most of these scored. Um, so this is 57 to 67. So that would be, let's see, 60s is a D, right? So these would be uh, the Ds, Cs, Bs, As, As also here. Um, what I was looking for, um, just how Excel has set up now, it's some of the graphing stuff is a little different. We used to be able to um, change like uh, where we started. That's what I was looking for, but I don't actually see it right now, um, which is why I got confused. I don't see uh, where I can have it start at zero. Um, hmm. I don't know, <laughs> uh, but this will be fun. I mean, that's still going to give you a, a pretty good comparison. The only thing you want to make sure of is uh, when you do that for the other teachers, when you group by 10, uh, their grouping by 10 may be a little different because of it's going to group it based on like this one. I guess the lowest score was like a 37 here. Uh, so it's grouping this first one to 47, 47 to 57, etc. Um, so if another group had a lowest score of 10, uh, you know, then its first group is going to be 10 to 20, 20 to 30. Um, and so just make sure when you're comparing the graphs that you actually can see, uh, you know, what you're kind of showing. Uh, but after that, sorry, if that's confusing. I didn't mean to confuse you all on that, but uh, that'll be fine if you just can click on this and then right click and go to the, the format axis and then just change your bin width to 10 um, and that'll set it up this way. OK, um, so your chart title, if you want to change that so it doesn't just say chart title and um, that doesn't give us a lot of information, uh, you want to left click on this. And once you left click here, you should see your little cursor in there and so you can just delete and type in there. So I might say this is uh, Mr. Smith's. exam grades something like that okay um, and so then when I'm comparing the different graphs I can see you know whose is whose when I'm uh, doing that comparison okay um, now another example I've got let me show you um, I know we've got the coffee shop um, but I've got another one we can do that's similar to that let me get this real quick. OK. So this this is just another data set, but this is going to be similar to what you would do for the coffee data. All right, so this one is actually an electric bill, uh, looking at how the electric bill changes month by month. So with this, what you'll do is you want to highlight all the columns of data. So for the coffee shop, you would highlight the, um, the day and the time and the number of customers. So highlight everything like we have here and then go to insert. And then we want this one uh, that you can see has the lines, right? And just choose this first one here. 
the first 2D line and you'll get this. All right, so like we could see from a graph like this uh, that it does have seasonality, right? Which we talked about in class. And the reason why we know that is we see these are different years, right? But we notice kind of these same peaks reoccurring and these valleys kind of in the same spot. Now, sometimes you might get a lower one or a little bit higher, but there's still kind of that same pattern. So it looks like um, our electric bill is the highest in December and then also in February. Um, and then it's the lowest here in the summer, right? July, June, July, et cetera. OK, um, and so that is how we would read something like that. So we would say this does have seasonality. Um, if you want to see more down here, like if it's too cluttered, you can always uh, spread it out like this and just kind of pull it out. And that's what makes it a little easier to see um, if you squish it in like this. Um, it's only going to show some of the months. It's just going to show whatever will fit in there. Um, so that's how you can kind of see if you need to see more of the, the days or the times. Uh, you can just uh, kind of pull it out like that. And then again, of course, we can change the chart type title there. Um, if we want to label any of these axes, you can do that up here by saying once you sorry, once you click on this, you get this uh, menu up here for chart design and you can add an element. Um, so if you want to add uh, your axis titles here, like if you want, um, when I click this here, notice that beside the numbers on the Y axis, I get a title. So if I wanted to title that, you know, monthly bill or millions of dollars or thousands of people or you know whatever I'm trying to show I might need to label that this one it's kind of self-explanatory I guess what it is once you say these are your monthly electric bills um, but if you needed to label it you could do that and then of course up here you can do things where you're like you know changing the color whatever you know exciting stuff like that if you uh, want to do something there we go. We'll make it more Thanksgiving e looking. OK, so um, there is our uh, chart that would show um, how our electric bill is changing over time. And that's what you would do for the coffee shop one. So that is a quick overview of how to do uh, the stats project and then also just looking at some of the final topics in unit four. Uh, there's other lecture videos, of course, in YouTube you've probably already looked at, but if you need a little more help with Excel or um, any of the topics we've covered, you should be able to find a few more uh, videos on the topics there. Uh, of course, you can always email me if you have any questions um, and I'll try to help you out with that or help you to find maybe a video uh, that would uh, help you the best. If you do have a graphing calculator and you want to learn how to use that more, I know that I do have in my lecture videos um, how to use like the one variable stats in the calculator. And that is a function that will show you the mean, the median and the standard deviation kind of all at one time. Uh, so you can do that in the calculator. If you have uh, the graphing calculator, so like this one, um, if you just have the scientific calculator, then I would say using Excel um, is going to be the easiest for you. Uh, when you're working on your test or your final exam, you are able to access Excel. Um, it doesn't uh, sometimes when you're working on an exam in my labs, if you click on to something else, um, it'll like shut the test down or whatever, but um, you are allowed to use Excel that is acceptable for uh, the test. OK, so if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Uh, don't forget that your stats project and this unit four uh, assignments are all due uh, this next weekend, right? Um, at, uh, the Sunday after Thanksgiving is when everything's due and then you've got the whole week 
um, after Thanksgiving to prepare for the final by looking at the practice final. Um, and then you can take your final exam. Of course, that's in my labs and you can take it just one time and it's just covering unit three and four. So just the stuff about uh, linear exponential logarithmic equations and then the statistics unit. OK, so good luck as you finish up the semester studying for your finals and getting all your projects turned in. Please feel free to contact me if you have any issues or questions um, as we finish up our last uh, week and a half together. All right, um, so I will talk to you soon. Thanks.